A 74 degree night in the Windy City. The road team 10 up and 5 down in the last 15 NBA Finals games. That includes all three games this series. So the home court has not exactly been an advantage. We're set for the introduction of the starting lineup. Let's join with Ray Clay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's Game 4 of the NBA Finals is between the Phoenix Suns and your Chicago Bulls! Now for tonight's lineup. First for the visiting Phoenix Suns. At forward, Rob Auburn, 6'6", Charles Barkley. On 6'7", forward from Oklahoma State, Richard Dumas. Michigan, 6'6", Dan Marley. And the other guard, 6'1", from California, Kevin Johnson. The Phoenix Suns are coached by Paul Westfall. Assisted by Lionel Holland, Scotty Robertson, the trainer, Joe Brodsky. The thing that surprised him, though, was that the Phoenix Suns were able to come in here on Sunday and catch them emotionally flat. He said that will not happen tonight. Their goal is to turn the intensity up as high as possible from start to finish because the last thing they want to do is go back to Phoenix. Hannah? Well, Ahmad, one would think that a team like the Phoenix Suns with very little experience in the finals might be a fight at this point in the series, but that is not the case. It's because their coach, Paul Westfall, has told them to have fun at the finals. That's exactly what they've been doing, led, of course, by Charles Barkley, who you saw joking around with Marv Albert. Charles has been enjoying the city he took in a baseball game and is even having fun at the mandatory media session. But if you ask him how he feels, he simply says, I feel good, and says it with a smile. Marv? Yes, thanks, Anna. Charles does have a most unique way in preparing for the NBA Finals. Well, I don't think Michael Jackson has anything to worry <laughs> about. <laughs> All right, Hugh Evans, Ed T. Rush, Bill Oates are the officials. We saw a different matchup in Game 3, utilized by Paul Westfall. What are you looking for here tonight? Paul Westfall is going to change up during the course of the game. Yes, KJ will play Michael Jordan at times as Horace Grant misses his first jumper, but he's going to change up. You'll see Richard Dumas playing. You'll see Dan Marlin playing. And here's one of the 
adjustments. You want Dan Marley bringing the ball up the floor a little bit more, take some of the pressure off KJ, and after 62 minutes, he may need some help tonight. Johnson finding Mark West all by himself. Missed assignment by the ball. Well, what happened was that the ball, uh, the Phoenix Suns set a back pick, and both men went to KJ and then hit Mark West for easy two. And this Dumas on Jordan here at the start. Pippen. Pippen with the recovery. Try to hit Cartwright, but Barkley alert was right there for the steal. And here comes Kevin Johnson. A minute gone by. A 2-0 Phoenix lead. Grant with the rebound. Armstrong with Barkley back. So the Phoenix Suns return to the offense. And Johnson, 11 for 24, 25 points. And game three, along with nine assists, a stellar turnaround performance. And Marley hits six from three-point range. Mark West, fouled by Bill Cartwright, who would not allow for possession. Had the first play happen, Mark West set a back pick. Both defensive players instead run to the corner. It'll leave West wide open, rolling to the basket. One player, two players go to the corner. No one rotates underneath West for the score. Back to the live action. Barkley backs in, faces a double team. Dumas is open. Dumas had a strange game on Sunday night. Played quite a bit of the first half. Shot well, did a nice job, but did not see much action in the second half. Bulls have missed their first three shots. Cartwright double team. Grant with the recovery. Sucks four. The Bulls two. Okay, what Coach Paul Westball is doing, he got Charles Barkley playing Cartwright, and so he's mixing up his uh, assignments defensively to try to throw the Bulls off. Uh, left hand move cut off by Jordan Dumas to the reverse Richard Dumas has been getting the good start early that has been the pattern and he's come out with a couple of hoops here in the early going Phoenix 6 and Chicago 2 Michael Jordan getting on his first attempt well that time uh, you had Richard Dumas guard Michael Jordan and see Richard Dumas is not used to running off of picks and they set a pick on him with a beautiful move off the fake to beat Pippen, set up by Barkley. Scotty Pippen ran over, formed a double team with Horace Grant. It was a, a double team that was a difficult one because the floor was so spread as Michael goes to the basket, misses, but Horace Grant tips it in. What happened was Phoenix never hesitated. They were attacked against the press immediately. Easy score, 2-1 against the back line. Kevin Johnson, bothered by B.J. Armstrong. Dumas against Pippen. And Pippen plays it well. He stops him. Hears it from the crowd. What on the shot clock? It is waved off. It's a 24 second violation. Excellent defensive sequence by the Bulls. Phoenix State and Chicago 6 were just underway. Game 4 this best of seven NBA final series. The Bulls up two games to one. Game five here in Chicago on Friday night. And the Suns want to make it a game six back in Phoenix on Sunday. Michael Jordan is two of three. Harley gets down. So the Suns take advantage on the transition and lead 10-8. Michael shoots a jump shot. The man guarding him takes off immediately, runs down the floor. The way you stop that is you jam the guy who runs out of bounds throw that baseball pass. Well, again, Mike, that wasn't uh, Michael Jordan fought that time because Marley is not guarding Michael Jordan. That was Scottie Pippen who was guarding Marley, and that was his fault. Dumas. And Pippen moves back. Pippen all the way. Bulls and Suns are tied at 10. Picks up Johnson in the backcourt. It's back to the pressure of Armstrong against Johnson. Ah. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch. Oh. 
by Chicago. And it will be Phoenix ball with eight on the 24. Barkley with his first shot. Pippen works his way inside. Oh, what a move by Scotty Pippen. The Bulls lead by two. See, the only problem when you got all these new mismatches, you have to, uh, Phoenix side, you have to remember, they're not used to playing uh, these Chicago Bull players. They're used to playing other Bull players. So now they're going to have to get used to that. A timeout is taken by the Bulls. 6-0 a great reverse pivot move on the baseline goes up strong to the rim but the defense by Chicago ran from behind blocks it Charles doesn't quite agree with the call after the block shot by Horace Grant Charles Barkley does not agree goes after Bill Oates the official and lets him know it looks like Oates is ready to hit him with a technical foul Instead, he lets it go and walks away. You need to remember the incident that took place in Madison Square Garden with Scottie Pippen. Yes, that was back in game two of the series, a game that saw six technical fouls called, and it was Scottie Pippen throwing the ball at the official Bill Oaks, who had the quick thumb that night, and Pippen was thrown out. Chicago lost that game to the Knicks 96-91. Knicks had a 2-0 lead, and then Chicago came back, reeled off four straight victories. So you're saying that uh, perhaps the, the trigger-happy situation as Johnson forced it, and a loose ball foul is called on the Suns. Is it your feeling that the league would prefer a bit more compassion when it comes to ejections in critical situations? I think Bill Oaks used excellent judgment that time. I think he'll be the first to admit that he made a mistake in the game at Madison Square Garden. He missed the call. It was not a uh, double dribble or two hands on the basketball. Then he compounded the mistake by throwing Scotty out of the game. This time, good decision. Walk away. Let it go. Let him continue to play. Jordan with the shot clock running down. Cartwright gets to it. Plus, Marv, you have to remember, people come to see the stars. They don't want to see them thrown out of the game. Unless there is a solid reason for it. Cartwright not able to hit Grant with a spin. Horace Grant off the fast start. He has six. The ball is 14. The Suns 10. Horace Grant started slowly in game three. He was involved in early foul trouble. Then came on late before fouling out. West off a double team. Rebound, Grant. Well, the Bulls have to like the intensity they're getting here as Armstrong finishes off the break to give Chicago a six-point lead. Ahmad Rashad mentioned after that last time now, Phil Jackson was very happy with the intensity of the basketball team, but they had come out strong. Just talking about minor adjustments, but basically overall teams is what was going on. Bad shot taken by Kevin Johnson and the Suns' fortune that it was knocked out of bounds by the Bulls. Point of emphasis for Phoenix, keep Chicago off the offensive boards, and that's their main man, Horace Grant, who gives them those second shot opportunities. It is a 10-0 run for Chicago. Meanwhile, Phoenix has missed its last five shots. 5-11 remaining in this first quarter, and the Bulls lead 16-10. There's Oliver Miller. The rookie from Arkansas, checking in for the first time, replacing Mark West. Barkley not given any room from three-point land. Miller, Barkley, Charles getting the good position. And the Bulls now lead by four for Barkley, his first field goal. Dumas on Armstrong. Kevin Johnson back defending against Jordan. You may have noticed that Michael could have taken a quick shot when he first came down. Steal this time by Richie Dumas. Oh, pay attention. Behind the back and hits on the drive. What a move by Richard Dumas. He now has eight. It was a fantastic steal as well and a great offensive. 
the play. Another steal here by Phoenix. And it's Dumas with the numbers. Surprised Barkley with that pass, and it was deflected out by Chicago. Producing some easy scores of their own by playing good defense. Dumas shoots the passing lane, then gives a little behind-the-back action as B.J. reaches for the steal and finishes. And a reach and foul. B.J. Armstrong called for his first. Before the steal by Richard Dumas, I mentioned that Michael Jordan had a quick early shot, but instead you saw him pull it out, reverse the basketball. One of the things Chicago wanted to do tonight, use more time up on the 24-second clock. Don't get into Phoenix's tempo. Play their tempo. Make Phoenix play defense. Pick and roll resulting in the turnover. Pippen for Armstrong. Chicago leads by four as we come up on four minutes remaining in this first quarter. Richard Dumas, five out of six for ten points. Well, since Richard Dumas is playing so well, it's going to be interesting if, to see if Paul Westfall playing in the fourth quarter because he hasn't been playing in the fourth quarter. Sarcastic reaction to that foul call against the Suns. It was called on Barkley. The Bulls went to the line only nine times during that triple overtime. The Suns, 31 times. Yes, the crowd is happy that Michael Jordan is getting a whistle early in the game and a chance to go to the free throw line. They shot so few, only nine attempts in game number three that Michael may have forgotten how to shoot a ball in three out of six. They changed the foul as Oliver Miller called rather than Charles Barkley. Bulls lead by three. Here's pressure by Chicago. Miller's pass kicked off. said after that triple overtime game the other night. Michael took, what, 43 shots? That's Barley for three. So Michael took 43 shots. He's going to be icing his elbow, too. Pippen gets inside. Phoenix will talk it over. If you get Michael down low, the double team can't get there soon enough he'll just shoot it over the top of Kevin Johnson and then this is one opportunity that Scotty Pippen just couldn't pass up in transition Miller trying to guard him no way we pull this out we score a deadly obsession can become a fatal attraction not too many teams have been asked to come back from a triple overtime loss. How difficult was it for Phil Jackson coming back from that three overtime defeat? We talked that, about that with Phil yesterday. It's usually like 24 hours. It takes a, a full day to get it out of the system. By last night, I felt pretty comfortable again uh, that, you know, everything was okay. Uh, I got it out of my system through viewing it, obviously, and finding out the uh, second time through what I had to see. And then I got it out of my system about, by talking to the coaches and uh, talking about, you know, realistically, where are we here? And then finally, just by getting some exercise, and then that was all. You know, it's amazing. Magic and I feel the same way when we're done working with you, and a little bit of exercise makes us feel much What better. a cheap shot attempt off a, a serious issue. Just <laughs> awful magic that I have to live with this the entire season. Well, I'm not going to get into that one, but I am going to get into this one. Now you see Kevin Johnson is coming back down to release some of that pressure because they had turned the Phoenix, had turned the ball over last time, and I think Paul Westfall wanted to get Kevin back down there. And Kevin Johnson able to penetrate. The Bulls now lead 23, 18 with two minutes and 40 seconds remaining the first quarter. Bulls have hit their last five shots. They are 11 of 18. Here is Jordan, that time guarded by Chambers. Chambers! Oh, Chambers got over the hip, but he's fouled. Chambers did well in eluding the block of the two. Guys 
chasing him, two of the best defenders in basketball, and Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen. Earlier, when Marley ran out, Michael Jordan was in the corner. This time, he was at the top of the circle, so he was the deepest man. Chambers took off immediately on the jump shot. He goes to finish it off with a dunk, but the foul makes the ball pop back out again. Foul committed by Pippen. Remember, to count as two points, the ball must pass through the net. To count as two. There are shots that have gone in and popped back out of the net again, which means you don't get two points now. Tom Chambers, 27 minutes. The other Pike did a nice job, 5 for 9, 12 points. So the Bulls now lead by three. Conway, Grant, Pippen up front. Jordan and Armstrong at the guard. Battle between Chambers and Cartwright on the foul session on Chambers. This is a real key matchup. Chicago knowing that Tom Chambers is on Bill Cartwright, where well, they go right into him. And uh, Chambers is called for the push in the back. Now Jordan guarded by Dumas. Marley over to help, but leaves Pippen open. And Pippen goes to the hoop. No, no interior defense that time. No one stepped up to meet Scotty Pippen. Everybody in the stadium knew he was going to fake and put it on the floor. There was nobody in front of him. Well, I think that's the problem when Phoenix just keeps switching these matchups with Jordan. You know, you got one guy guarding one time down, the other guy the next time. Forrest Grant is called for a foul there on Charles Barkley. So they're having a problem with their team defense because of all the defenses that they, they keep changing. Scotty Pippen's going to get the ball. Look at the lane to the basket. Somebody's got to step up and take him before he drives it down the lane. Nobody does. Too easy going in there. Well, a forgotten man, Rodney McCray. Hearing the rumbling from the crowd as he gets set to check in. Rodney McCray hit season for Rodney McCray in his 10th NBA year out of Louisville, coming back from arthroscopic knee surgery. Missed 17 games, a, a disappointing year. In fact, he himself says he feels his contribution has been zero. Early entrance, though, for McCray. Barkley. The position on Pippen and Charles with his second field goal. He has four. The Bulls, 25. And the Suns, 22. Bulls have hit their last seven straight as Michael Jordan makes it four for seven for nine points. And Chambers is fouled again. See what you have here. You have Bill Cartwright guarding Tom Chambers. And Tom Chambers guarding Bill Cartwright. Now we're going to see which one is going to take advantage of the other. And last time down, Bill drew a foul on Chambers. This time, Chambers draw a foul on Bill Cartwright using his quickness. And somebody may have questioned why was Barkley taken off of Cartwright because, you know, it was so good for Charles in the last game. He conserved all that energy playing Bill. Chicago doesn't go to him that much. The reason is because it would have put Chambers on Grant before he was just taken out. Chambers can't change ends of the floor or jump with Grant on the offensive board. So they put Barkley back on Grant. Chambers now three out of four from the line. Bulls 27, Suns 23. One ten left in the first quarter. Here's Cartwright. Jordan putting the move on Marley, changed his mind, last touch by McCray. Here's another problem. Now, who does McCray play? Does he play Dumas, who's very active and quick, or does he play Barkley, who will overpower either Pippen or McCray? Doesn't matter. Right now, they just switch back and put McCray on Barkley, then Pippen ran over to take Barkley. And Charles Barkley is at three for five. He has six points, both by two. Led by as many as seven. Michael Jordan on target. He's five out of eight. Eleven points. Chicago 29. Phoenix 25. Here's pressure by the Bulls. Twenty 
seconds left in the quarter. Johnson gets inside. Armstrong out the run. Schaefer is getting back. The lead for Pippen. 11 seconds left in the quarter. And Johnson went down in a collision with Armstrong. No collision, Marv. B.J. pushed him down. There's a little thing going on here. I think that B.J. felt that K.J. had elbowed him. After that, B.J. just threw him down on the ground. K.J. tries to hold off to get the ball inbounds when they start pressure in Chicago. B.J. felt that him holding off was a little too hard. He shoved him in the head. There's the push to the ground. That's no accident. will go to the line. Kevin Johnson, 82%. Free throw shooter. Now Trent Tucker has checked in for Bill Cartwright. defensive man wants a little room to get it in bounds. The defensive man doesn't like the fact that he pushed him in the head. Another example of when the second foul is caught many times by the official, not the first. That's taking another look. Little massage move by Kevin Johnson leading to the push. Armstrong, time running out. After one here in Chicago, hot shooting by the Bulls, 15 for 24, 63 percent. A physical finish to the quarter for B.J. Armstrong, an unlikely combat. Richard Dumas had the hot hand for the Suns. He hit five out of six, ten points in this first quarter. And it's the Bulls, 31, the Suns, 27. Welcome back to Chicago, Marv Albert. Along with the czar of the Telestrator, Mike Fratello, Magic Johnson, Ahmad Rashad, Hannah Storm, Bob Costas will be along with the Prudential Halftime Report. Talked about the sore elbow of Charles Barkley. You ever uh, suffer from Telestrator elbow, czar? I know you've been seen icing it down after telecast. I have to deal with that frequently, particularly when given many opportunities in one game and then in triple overtime games, it's really difficult to bounce back. What? And uh, Charles Barkley, despite that injured elbow, three of five, six points in the first quarter. Danny Ainge has checked in for the first time. Stacy King has come on, as has John Paxson. Harley with the rebound, nice fake on McRae. So the Suns now trail 31 to 29. Jordan and Paxson at the guards with King, McRae, Williams up front. So Scott Williams, Stacy King, and Rodney McRae on the Chicago front line. And Jordan is being guarded by Marlon. Jordan. Barkley gets to it. Ahmad had mentioned coming out of the timeout that Chicago went with McRae over King. A nice backdoor pass by Troy Barkley to Danny Ainge. Chicago had gone with McCray rather than King for more quickness on the floor because McCray is noted to be a pretty good defender. Now, both players are out on the floor in an unusual unit out there for the Chicago Bulls. First time McCray has played in this series. Seldom used during the season. Jordan, yes, and it counts. Well, Michael Jordan feels he can beat Dan Marley off the dribble anytime he wants to, and he does it right there, scoop for two. Now, that's the reason why they switched KJ and put KJ on him in game uh, three, and now you can see that uh, Marley is back on him in this game here. And Michael Jordan upset with himself, one of three from the line. Chambers was called for that foul. Miller was expecting contact, kicked out by Williams on the ball. Phoenix wastes no time trying to come back at you. If they can get it down, post someone up quickly, they go right to it. Well, they've changed their game now. They're going back to the regular season philosophy, trying to beat you down the court and score at will on you. Now Barkley facing the 
triple team. Charles was so concerned about McCray coming down from the top that he lost sight of Stacey King from behind him. Jordan with 15. The Bulls lead 35 to 31. As you mentioned, the Suns' regular season philosophy, they average 113 per game, leading the NBA, second in shooting it at 49%. Here's Chambers. Yes, a two-point Chicago lead. Well, they felt that in, in game three that they went back to that philosophy. Got a lot of open shots uh, in the game, in game three, because they were pushing the ball up early, and they're trying to do that again. Barkley with the steal. Well, Charles had that diagnosed, and he's tying the game at 35. Had some words of advice for Jordan as he finished it off. Oh, yeah, he's just letting them know that he's here to try to win a championship. This is a... You know, this is a very interesting game. You, you felt that the Bulls were going to take advantage of the situation because they came out strong. Now here comes Phoenix back strong. Let's go back a moment ago to Michael, who's made a decision here, a concerted effort to go to the basket, 7 for 11 from the floor at this point. And then Charles showed Michael that he wants to play in this game as well. The best for a guy his size that's stepping up in the passing lane and then taking it the length of the floor. Strong start for Michael Jordan. He's hit 7 of 11 for 15 points, although he did not have a usual Michael Jordan-type game on Sunday night. It has been a splendid playoff run for Michael. I asked him, is this the best that he has played all season long? I think it has been because I think what's at stake is a little bit more challenging than what you know was at stake going through the 82 games. You know what I mean? Uh, once you go through it a certain amount of times, uh, you have a monotony st starting to set in, so you don't really have the challenge that that's there today or uh, at this particular time. And uh, I think that's helped me more than being more consistent with my play. You kind of miss the dark sunglasses look on you. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm not sure if you can see that or not. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, you well, didn't have the glasses off. So. Ainge. Ainge on the follow. Three minutes gone by in the second quarter. And the Bulls now lead 37-35. Here's Jordan. 19 for Jordan. Well, there aren't a whole lot of jump shots coming out of Michael Jordan this evening. He's taking it to the rim. him a lot and he's just taking Dan off the dribble. That's him looking to spot up. Jordan threw the foul. Well Phil Jackson told us after practice yesterday he wanted Michael going to the rim and that has been the case here in the first half. Well he certainly elevates his game here as he finishes with the right hand then that was so good he decided to come back again and try it with the left. Watch Morley yelling for help immediately. Where's my help? Come on, guys. Close the lane down. But a little too late as Michael draws contact. I couldn't believe that I, I read in a Chicago paper today that one of the sports writers said that Michael Jordan has lost a step. He looks like he's getting old because he couldn't finish and, uh, and win the game for him in game three. And it just blew me right away. How quickly they forget. Michael Jordan with all of Chicago's points in the second quarter, and he has 20 of the Bulls' 40. Make it 21 of 41, and the Bulls now lead 41 to 35. And here's pressure by Chicago. Now they double up on Johnson. Miller had to save it. The trapping of the Bulls paying dividends here. West for Barkley, and he's fouled by Williams. That was an excellent read that time by West. Yeah, it was a little shaky getting the ball over the half-court line, but then he had Ainge behind the three-point line or Barkley inside, he picked out Barkley on the inside. But it was John's fault. John Paxson, he should have stayed with Barkley. Instead, when uh, West pump fake, he thought he was going out to Danny Ainge. John ran that way, and he dumped it right into Barkley. One of the things coaches emphasize, don't leave until the ball rotation out because great players will fall fake you get you to run and then they'll thread the needle in the heart of the defense. Barkley on 
down the line for the first time, a 76% free throw shooter. Danny Ainge departing. Replaced by Richard Dumas, who had the hot hand early at five of six. Both clubs have shot well. Chicago 65% from the floor. West cuts it to a three-point Chicago lead, and the Suns are shooting 50%. Paul Westmore on the thing feels pretty good. He hasn't had to play KJ on life a whole lot here so far, and they're still close enough. If he needs it a lot in the second half, he should be fresh. Michael Jordan, 10 for 14, 23 points. It counts in the foul. Dumas blocked by King, and Dumas will go to the line. Michael Jordan with the smaller KJ goes down the baseline, then just intends to elevate over the top and get a good look. The one thing that Phoenix has been doing, the long baseball pass, something that must be there in the scouting report, that they can take advantage in transition after scoring. This Phoenix team is back to playing. They're running style basketball. They're running after May baskets. They're running after Miss baskets. They're just getting out, beating the Chicago Bulls down the court every single time. Dumas to the line for the first time. 71% free throw shooter. Three-point play for the rookie Richard Dumas. The Bulls 43, the Suns 41. Michael Jordan scoring all 12 Chicago points here in the second quarter on five of six from the field. Illegal defense called for the first time. And now the matchup is Kevin Johnson guarding Michael Jordan as the rotating on the defense continues against Jordan. Miller sitting down. Chambers is back. Now Johnson guarding Paxson. And a Dumas against Jordan. Foul Paul Dumas using the two hands to try and keep Jordan away. I think that the change took place because Paul Westfall felt Michael's been getting down the baseline a lot. Let me put a bigger guy, a more athletic guy, to perhaps challenge his shot. Problem is, when the offensive guy is backing down, you cannot put two hands in his back. Dumas goes 6-7, about 205. Here's Jordan. Dumas gambled went for the steal and it led to the foul that's one of the reasons why Richard Dumas is not on the floor at the end of games right now recently because he gambles a lot defensively he breaks the team defense down goes for the steal misses it leads to an easy two free throw attempt for Michael Kevin Johnson called for the foul reaching in Jordan four of six he has 24 points Jordan bounced back from a subpar outing in the Knicks series with that 54-point explosion. They trapped Johnson. Help from Dumas. Chambers picked up by Pippen. Chambers shooting. Barkley keeps it alive. Barkley. Look out. It is Phoenix ball. Hugh Evans hanging in after the contact with Jordan and still able to make the call. Timeout taken. 6.59 remaining. In this first half, Jordan trying to save it. Makes contact with the official Hugh Evans. When we come back, it will be Phoenix presenting. In game, th in game three with Kevin Johnson playing Michael Jordan, he couldn't get by him on the first step, so he would resort to backing down, backing down, trying to shoot over the top of Kevin Johnson. The difference, when Dan Marley's guarding him, Jordan tries to face the basket because he knows he can beat Marley. The difference in foot speed in tonight's game, he goes right around Dan Marley. Well, the Bulls and Suns have each scored 14 points in this second quarter. Michael Jordan has scored all 14 for Chicago. Offensive foul. It walks with the call on Mark West. It was a good call. Mark West was not squared up, did not set a good screen. Turned into the defensive player who was trying to go underneath the back pick. Actually caught him with his arm. Now every time, let's see if Chicago can put, make 
some room in between them and Phoenix. Every time they've gotten a, a lead, Phoenix that come right back and ties the game. Jordan guarded by Johnson with a rare miss, but Grant able to keep it alive. Another possession for the Bulls. Six and a half remaining in this first half. The Bulls lead by four. They isolate Jordan against Johnson. Pippen for three. And Molly on the backcourt, Mark West, Charles Barkley up front, along with Richard Dumas. And the foul call, a hold on Paxson. On that last shot attempt by Scotty Pippen, Richard Dumas ran out right away. And that time, John Paxson covered the backcourt correctly for him, so that Pippen wasn't left stranded trying to follow through on a jumper. He had no ability to get back and cover Dumas. Working hard for the shot. Mark West is three for three. Six points. The Bulls now lead 45-43. Couldn't beat KJ off the dribble on that first step. KJ did a good job keeping the ball in front of him. Jordan with some room. 11 of 16. 27 points. The NBA Finals record most points and a half. 35 by Michael Jordan. Series against Portland. And it's getting back. Action for three. Yes. That, the first field goal by a bull aside from Michael Jordan in the second quarter. Bulls have matched their biggest lead. A margin of seven for the the rebound. Jordan's pass deflected, handled by Grant. Now the Bulls lead by nine. Well, what's happening here is Phoenix has got to now slow the game down. But now they want to time out by Phoenix. But right now, Chicago has got their high court offense going because of Michael Jordan is dominating the game. Phoenix must now find out what are they going to do in their half court to come back Michael Jordan. Thank you, Bob. Charles Barkley, the league's MVP, averaged 25 points per game, fifth in the NBA, sixth in rebounding, and averaged five assists per game. And a guy who is certainly enjoying being around the scene here during the uh, NBA Finals, both in Phoenix and Chicago. We mentioned back a few moments ago that when K.J. guards Michael Jordan, he has the foot speed to stop his penetration. He does a pretty good job here taking away the lane, so Michael pulls back out. But the one thing Michael is doing now is using screens to free himself up. Now he has the jumper over the top of K.J. K.J. just not big enough to get out there and challenge him. I just wanted to test my voice a little bit. <laughs> Octave, that's all. Magic, he is soprano by God. Yes, but, uh, a lot of soprano in that, that screen. Both teams coming out of those timeouts with different ideas in mind. Hannah mentioned that Phoenix pointing out they must box out, keep Chicago off the offensive board. Ahmad mentioned that Phil Jackson concerned with the fact that Michael's doing all the scoring. Got to get the other Chicago Bulls players involved in the offense was his point. Well, what happened with uh, Phoenix's side in terms of offensive rebounds, see, you got all these guys playing different guys and they're not used to playing them, and then you can go to the boards on them because they're not used to boxing out. Seven all run by the Bulls. You saw the foul committed by Jordan, his first. Marley, who has had very few opportunities. Barkley with the save. Paxson gets to it. Four ten remaining in the first half. Chicago seeking to go up three games to one. Phoenix trying to tie the series at two. Jordan rebounded by Barkley. Okay, Phoenix needs to slow it down and get a basket finally. They need to run some and get a basket. See that rushing their offense and turning the ball over. Morris Grant with that steal. There's Pippen. Paxson for three. Smart. 
Chicago didn't come the first time that he had it post up. They're waiting for him to get to a certain spot. He's trying to draw double teams to kick out. They're not coming to double team until he gets very low, close to the basket. He's got to post up a little bit lower, then they'll come quickly on him. Shot clock at three, caught right. West with the rebound. See, I didn't like that, Mar. They should have slowed it up. Charles had just hit. Come right back to him. Grant. And the foul is called as Horace Grant hits the floor. Foul on Mark West. That is his second. Barkley posting up, reading the defense. Everybody is staying at home for Chicago until the last second. Paxson's going to try and come late to double team, but it's too late. You can't let Charles get this close to the basket. He splits him and scores. Grant, eight points and ten rebounds, a terrific first half. Horace Grant named to the NBA's all defensive second team, but he's the first to admit. Now, Michael Jordan will get a rest, 27 points for Michael. 11 of 17 from the field. Scott Williams is back. Horace Grant, the first to admit when people say he's the best defensive power forward of the game, he said. Maybe one and a half. He says Charles Oakley of the New York Knicks is number one in terms of power forward. But Horace Grant, an excellent defender, and uh, has had a very strong playoff series. Well, one guy, Oakley, won't let you get the position you want on the low post. The other guy is Horace Grant. He blocks shots and grabs all the defensive boards. Nice pass. Barkley fouled. Kevin Johnson hitting Charles Barkley on the hop. And the foul is called on Scott Williams. And just to go back to that thought about defense, Oakley may be a better power forward defensively as far as strength and stuff, but there's other types of defense involved, like shot blocking ability, which this guy has and Oakley really doesn't have. So Barkley to the line. He's one of two from the line. Suns now eight of ten from the foul line. Bulls seven of nine. Both clubs have shot well. Bulls at 59% from the field. Phoenix just under 50. I think this is more important for Phoenix in these last two minutes and 26 seconds than it is for Chicago. They cannot let Chicago get a big lead, like a 10-point lead, and get this crowd going. The other factor, Phoenix not able to go to the major weapon in the triple overtime victory. Not able to go to the three-point shot. They've attempted only one, did not hit a holding foul on Ames. Bulls not giving any room to the, the long bombers like Ames and, and Marley. Have not been able to find, find the look to get off the shot. You know why, Mark? Because they stopped Kevin Johnson's penetration. See, once you stop him from penetration, penetrating, excuse me, like they're doing right now in the first half, then those... Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen can play up on Dan Marley and Danny Ainge and take away the shot. Grant, three of three from the line. Game three on Sunday in the first half. The Bulls, one for one from the foul line. So a different story here tonight. Bulls by eight. a three attack by Marley, and Dan Marley did get the good one. And Barkley got the double team he wanted and kicked it out at the appropriate time. You've got to make a decision against Barkley. Do you go? If so, when do you go? And with his passing ability and unselfish play, it's a matter of picking out the right man, and if it's Marley, he has a habit of making three-pointers. Has hit six the other night to tie an NBA Finals record. Oh, Barkley almost picked it off. Passes for three. Rebound, Grant. And again, Danny able to get to the loose ball. Here's Marley spotting up for another three. Yes! Dan Marley again. And he's brought the Suns within two. Because you got two three-pointers because Markley penetrated. Then they got him in transition and got the second three-point. A timeout taken by the Bulls with a minute and 20 remaining in this first half. Here is Pippen's man out here, Marley. Here is Pippen.
Pippen on the inside, they do a cute thing. They rotate Marley out top as Pippen goes for the double team, so it messes up the rotations of the Chicago Bulls. No one knows who to go. Pippen tries to recover. Too late. And then, you know, this guy has a habit of enjoying three-pointers. When he makes one, he likes it so much, he comes back and generally makes another one. Coach is kind of like it. Bench kind of likes it. And Marley hit six of eight from downtown on Sunday night. Balls old for the last six. Michael Jordan has returned and gets right to it. 29 for Jordan. The Bulls 57. The Suns 53. Something missing off of Michael Jordan this evening. The wrist brace on the right arm, the shooting hand, is not there this evening. Chambers with room. It was detected by Grant. Grant with the block. sooner you let him get inside the foul line area you know he's going to take off from there elevate and keep flying to the front of the rim you try to get him to pick up that dribble by the dotted line area the right wrist must be feeling better the brace is off he's 13 for 19 from the floor Morris Grant called for that loose ball foul and Charles Barkley will go to the line it's just an empty feeling if you're Dan Marley seeing Michael Jordan come at you full speed in the open court. You back it up, you're on your heels, you turn and look for help, and there's no one there. Well, remember when I was telling you in game three, he, he did not come at anybody with a head of steam because he was tired. Well, tonight he's not tired, and he's the most dangerous when he's coming at you with a head of steam. He can go left or right. Two days of rest certainly helping Michael to play some golf, I'm told yesterday but 31 points in this first half 20 of the 31 here in the second quarter he has 13 field goals that is one field goal away for an nba finals record most field goals in one half that is shared by isaiah thomas and michael jordan Bulls lead by five with 48 seconds remaining in the first half the only thing Michael does, Michael hasn't done in the first half is come up with a steal and knock down a three-pointer. So we'll see if he heads to his line. However, despite the exploits of Jordan, the Suns are only four down. That's what I was getting ready to say that uh, Paul Westwell must be feeling really good about his position in this game right now. Armstrong. Last touch by the ball. Chicago in transition. Barkley tried the three. Oh. Not so sure with the time remaining. It was just at 29 seconds when Charles went up for the shot. Might have been better for him to run it down. As you said, Magic, they should be feeling good. Only four down. They could have run it down right to the end and given Chicago very little time to try and score back at him. That has not been one of Charles's four He's shooting it from downtown. Michael Jordan. 14 for 20. He has 33 points, final seconds, Marley, yes, and the foul, potential four-point play, the three-pointer by Marley, and he's fouled by Jordan, with seven tenths of a second remaining in the half. Well, I tell you, Dan Marley has become a shooter in the NBA now. In the first couple of years, he couldn't shoot with any distance, he wanted to drive, look at here. He takes the foul and still knocks it down. That's a sign of a guy who not only can shoot, but he's also big and strong where he can take the foul and still knock it down. So you're saying it is, it is early, uh, early going in the NBA. You give him the outside shot. Yeah, before he wouldn't take it, he just wanted to drive. And that's what show you what hard work will do for you. Barkley gets it off. Would have counted. So the Suns sparked by some thunder late second quarter Dan Marley with 13 points he's hit three from long range three from three-point territory Michael Jordan 14 for 20 for 33 points in the first half 
22 of the 33 in the second quarter, and he has tied an NBA Finals record, a record that he shares with Isaiah Thomas. Most field goals in a half in the NBA Finals. He is 14 for 20. The Bulls at the half, 61, and the Suns, 58. Bob Costas and the Prudential Halftime Report, which will include a talk with Charles Barkley. Yes, sir. Hot shooting first half for both clubs. Chicago leading Phoenix 61-58. Marv Albert, Mike Fratello, and Magic Johnson. Michael Jordan, the story in the first half. A sensational shooting half for Michael Jordan. 14 of 20, 33 points. He mentioned to you prior to the game that he would come out shooting. He certainly did. But the downside, Magic, as we have seen from time to time, his teammates not involved. Could that hurt them in the long run? Well, I think he, Michael will come out in the second half and get his teammates more involved because he can't carry the whole team on his shoulders like he did in the first half. So look for him to be an assist man and look for Phoenix probably to double team him more. And Phoenix able to get back into it late in the second quarter with the uh, three-point play, primarily uh, utilized by Dan Marley. They were not able to find three-pointers earlier, but that did change late in the second quarter. I think first we need to go back to last game to see the job that Chicago was doing. A critical play as you get dribble penetration down the lane, and the defensive man, Michael Jordan, tries to help. You will notice that he cannot recover quickly enough to the three-point shooter, who happens to be Dan Marley. Not even contested wide open for the three-point shot you leave Marley open like that you've got a lot of problems this evening watch the extra special attention that they pay to the three-point shooters behind the line when the ball goes in we'll hold it right there for a second everyone is up close to the people that might back up behind the three-point line they're waiting a little bit longer before they go back inside to try and double team Charles Barkley saying basically that Barkley may get a few but we're not gonna let them explode on their three-point shots and for more on the Phoenix Suns, Hannah is with their coach, Paul Westfall. Thanks, Marv. Paul, uh, Chicago Bulls did a good job of shutting down your three-point options for most of the half, and then uh, your guys got loose for three three-pointers at the end. How do you get some good looks at three-point shots in the second half? Well, just tell Dan to back up. As long as he's inside the half-court line, he has a pretty good chance. You got some pretty balanced scoring. Are you happy with the distribution there? Well, I'm glad that we're only down three after the way Michael's played. I look at the stat sheet, though, I see he's only got one assist. I really think that if he wants to be recognized as an all-around player, he should start passing the ball. <laughs> okay, Paul, thanks. By the way, as Charles Barkley about his elbow, he said, well, I can't shoot, but I'm going to let it fly anyway. Mark? I will pass that uh, suggestion on to uh, Michael. I'm sure he'll, he'll start passing the ball around. A look at today's Miller Genuine Draft Halftime Statistics. Michael Jordan leading the way. Chicago 26 for 45. 58% shooting in the first half. Phoenix shot well, 22 of 46 for 48%. Jordan, 14 of 20 for his 33. And from three-point range, Phoenix, three out of five, all three from downtown from the hands of Dan Marley, who had six in game number three. Marley, three out of four from three-point land, 13 points in all. It's a three-point advantage for the Bulls as we head to the second half. Welcome back to Chicago Stadium. The usual set-out crowd on hand. Next season will be the finale for the Bulls and the Chicago Blackhawks here at the stadium. The new building still under construction just across the street will be open for business. Barkley from Marley, and the Suns move within one. At one stretch, the Bulls led by as many as nine. Armstrong and Jordan open up in the backcourt. Cartwright, Tiffin, and Grant are up front. Tiffin has been very quiet. Cartwright with a show the ball move on West. Grant shooting. For the Bulls, 63. The Suns, 60. Setting Phoenix, Kevin Johnson, Dan Marley in the backcourt, Richard Dumas, Mark West, and Charles Barkley up front. Some team is going to have to catch, take control of this game defensively and not offensively. Whoever wins the game will be because of defense. West go the left. Armstrong pushing down. first three-point field goal attempt. Kevin Johnson only one of six, three assists, two turnovers in the first half. Dumas posting up Armstrong, help from Cartwright, and Dumas lost 
missed it. Try to hold it up there with one hand. That's what happened. Pippen. Beautiful lead for Scotty Pippen. And a quick 20 taken by Paul Westfall. Well, right, right here, Paul Westfall is going crazy. He's telling his team, what are you doing? Let's stick with our offense. Let's stick with what's got us back into this game. Maybe Michael Jordan can do this. Maybe Charles Barkley can do this, depending on the size of the hands. But Dumas, use two hands when you pass the basketball, Richard. Otherwise, you're going to drop it against the aggressive double team. And when you turn it over against Chicago, they come back at you quickly and score. So five-point lead for the Bulls in this game. Four of the best of seven. Game one, it was Jordan with 31, Pippen with 27, and a... Victory for the Bulls. They did it in game two in Phoenix, led by Jordan at 42. Barkley with the 42. Game three was Marley hitting from three-point land, tying an NBA Finals record, hitting six from downtown. Barkley rebounded by Cartwright. Charles Barkley, six of 13. Michael Jordan once again with the extension, once again taking it to the basket. This is what happens when you got so many guys trying to guard Michael Jordan that's not used to guarding. He just takes Dumas, head fakes him to the baseline, comes back to the middle, and scores on him. If you go back to the first half, we showed you him crossing over right to left. That time he gave you a little zigzag dribble. He started with the crossover, but came back to the right hand to come down the lane. 36 for Jordan. Just 33 points in the first half. Two away from an NBA Finals record. He scored 35 for the record in game one against Portland last season. Barkley. Eight points, Chicago lead. Looking to add to it. Barkley broke it up. Upset. Felt that he should have picked it off. It'll be Chicago ball with 17. On the 24. Up to this point in the game, Charles Barkley is one for eight from the outside and four for five now from the inside. Caught right played by Barkley. Out of five on the 24. Out of three. Jordan. And Barkley with the rebound. Pops it down. Dumas ahead of the field. Able to elude Jordan. The Bulls 68 and the Suns 62. Richard Dumas has 15. Forte, that was one great outlet pass by Charles Barkley. Because you had Marley and Dumas running side by side with Michael back. And he was able to lay it out enough knowing that Dumas was going to outrun Marley to get to the ball. Hot right. Foul by West. That is number four. gets the ball, goes after the rebound, turns and sees two teammates down there. Michael can't decide which guy he's going to throw it to at first. He goes all the way to Dumas for the score. Tom Chambers will replace Mark West. Bill Cartwright looking for his first points. It has been an injury hit season for Bill Cartwright back in February, placed on the injured list because of a sore back and sore knees. West departing, Chambers comes on. Last year, Cartwright missed 17 games with a broken hand. Missed 17 games during the regular season this year. That's his first point. The Bulls lead by seven. Here's some pressure by Armstrong. Kevin Johnson has been very quiet to this point. Yeah, he, he's not been able to penetrate and get down the middle of the lane. Also, let's take a look and see what the Chambers and the Cartwright match up if Phoenix try to take advantage of Bill Cartwright guarding Tom Chambers. Cartwright call for that foul, his third. They tell the big men, step out and stop penetration. Well, Bill steps out, but a little bit too hard. Well, that's what you want, though. You may think it's a bad foul, but actually it's not, because next time Kevin's going to be thinking about Bill Cartwright jumping out there, and he might not come as hard off that pick and roll, Kevin Johnson. You're saying his bell is still ringing? Exactly. <laughs> Scott Williams has replaced Bill Cartwright. Jordan around Dumas. Yes! The idea 
idea of putting a bigger man on Jordan Dumas is good, except he's got to guard him off the dribble, which is bad. Richard Dumas cannot play Michael Jordan off the dribble. I I'm sorry, Mike, but no way can you put a man that's not used to guard Michael Jordan or guarding guards on Michael Jordan because Michael had too many moves for him. It's a, it's a good idea, but it's not working for the Phoenix Suns. The idea is to put athleticism against athleticism or somebody that might be able to leap and jump and challenge shots down low. But outside, when Michael takes him, like you said, no way he can play him off the dribble. Biggest lead of the game, 10-point margin for Chicago. Chambers fouled by Williams. Scott Williams called for his third. Now, I don't know where Scott Williams was supposed to go on that one. He stayed on the ground on the first fake when Chambers turned to the inside and showed the ball, then put his arms up straight, never left. It must be that his arms, leaning forward a little bit, broke the plane. Otherwise, pretty good defensive position to me. Chambers three for four from the line. The ball 72 and the Suns 63. anything but fouling when you got a big man who's got you 13 rebounds at this point in the game you want to reward him every so often and when he takes off and runs the floor at 610 and Michael sees him open he's gonna get him the basketball I always try to do that AC Green Kurt Rambis uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar they run down the floor I always try to get it to him fourth team foul committed by the Suns Barkley now guarding Pippen That's the pick. Johnson slicing through. Nice set up. Chambers rejected by Grant. Armstrong. Last touch by Chambers. You see why? You see why they miss Horace Grant so much in game three? Because not only can he rebound, but he can also block shots, as Mike pointed out earlier. Now they're getting the new 24. Williams setting the pick. Grant is fouled. Fouled by Miller. Puts Phoenix over at the limit. Oliver Miller called for his third. When we come back following this timeout, Horace Grant will head to the foul line. Chicago leading by eight. Katie. is brought to you by Jeep and Eagle, a division of the Chrysler Corporation. By the people at Nike, who encourage you to just do it. And by Miller Lite. Great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this? Well, Michael Jordan has certainly been going to the drive tonight. 8 for 10 when he has taken it to the basket. 8 of 14 with the jump shot. In effect, he has been red hot no matter what he has been doing, but Bill Jackson wanted him to put the ball on the floor and take it to the basket. He has 39 points, 54 by Jordan. Game four against the Knicks is well, the high game in the playoffs this season, followed by the 44 by Barkley and Jordan, and the Jordan had 43 game one against Cleveland. Most points ever in an NBA Finals game, 61. Scored by the current general manager of the Los Angeles Clippers, Elgin Baylor. He had 61 against the Boston Celtics back in April of 
62, followed by 55 by Rick Barry and Jerry West at a 53-point game against the Celtics back in 69. You know, I think people forget about those two guys scoring that many points. Now, if I'm, I'm Phoenix, what I want to do here is try to keep this game within 10. Make sure you don't let it get over 10 because you got to stay in striking distance. And I think they should now run an inside play to, to uh, Charles Barkley. Ball's fortunate to get it back. Here's Jordan. And again, Jordan with it. Armstrong for three. The Bulls with only their second three-pointer, but they extend to an 11-point advantage. P.J. Armstrong, the best three-point shooter percentage-wise in the NBA this half regular season. Johnson rejected by between Charles Barkley and Scotty Pippen. Well, it's the first time that they had work on either side. Today, you had two skirmishes. Now, this one by Barkley and, and uh, Pippen, and the other one by Kevin Johnson and BJ. And normally, you haven't had anything in this series. That little thing between Pippen and Barkley actually started about two or three minutes ago on a free throw situation where Barkley started to win a little bit too early. Pippen hit him a little elbow. Barkley shoved him back. You mentioned a couple of games back that uh, you felt it was wrong for Michael Jordan. And here's another look at Barkley and Pippen having words at close range. You thought it was wrong during the series for Barkley and Jordan, who are friendly, to have dinner, spend that much time together. Williams called for the foul. Well, I, I think what, what I'm trying to say is that you have to have some kind of uh, fear and some kind of not hate, but dislike for the team if you're going to try to win the championship. And now this series is finally heating up because the other night they all came over, uh, both the Phoenix Suns and the Chicago Bulls was at Michael Jordan's restaurant. And I turned to Quinn Buckner and I said, this is the first time I've ever seen two teams that were in the finals having dinner together. And when I played in the championship, I never went out to dinner with any of the guys. I always felt they were the enemy, the other uh, team, and you had to keep it like that. Yes, we feel the same way about having dinner with the Zong. <laughs> some type of situation. Long as he's paying for it. Barkley hits one out of two. The other day, you were also talking about the no layup rule, which is not in force. It seems for either club, I know that was something that uh, the, the Lakers had back in your days under Pat Riley. Well, Pat Riley told us when we were playing the Boston Celtics that if we let one guy come in for a layup or if we pick a guy up, we will get fined. And the same thing, BJ for three. And the same thing that the, he's doing with the New York Knicks. And you see Michael Jordan is able to drive here in this series anytime he wants to. All right, Miller able to put it down. That would tie in with guys are friendly. It would be unlikely as Jordan tries to slice through and he is, he is fouled. And Jordan has been able to drive the lane, but with a no layup rule, he would pay. But it's unlikely, what you're saying, that Barkley would be the one to make him pay. Right, here he comes in and uh, he, he went in between the double team and drew the contact. And uh, yeah, well, what will happen is Barkley's teammates were, were, were looking to see if he would take Michael out in terms of just hard fouling. And normally when you're friends, you might not do that. I just want to mention that last game, Charles Barkley played so many minutes against Bill Cartwright, and he used up so little energy that in the third overtime, he said, I was the precious player out on the floor. But tonight, that has not been the case. He's been matched up against Horace Grant. He's matched up against Scotty Pippen. Last time he got a rebound, dribbled the length of the floor, made the pass. He's using up a lot more energy tonight. We'll see if it has its effects in the fourth quarter. Barkley backing Williams. And a foul is called. As Charles Barkley lands on the floor, Scott Williams called for the foul. Oh, Charles talking it up with Chicago Bulls fans at courtside. Looked like he 
He hurt the elbow. Barkley gives the little reverse dribble, drop oh, step. The whistle is late, but you'd rather have it correct. Make the call, even if it's a little bit late. Send the guy to the foul line if there's body contact. Barkley, seven of nine from the line. Charles with some extracurricular activity. Don't read lips now, guys. But that's Charles Barkley at his best. You know, he loves to, to uh, have a conversation with the fans, especially the ones who get on him. He wants to show that uh, he's the man out on the court, and also he tries to turn that into an advantage for his team. It's no different here than it was in Barcelona, where the people in the arena some of the countries may not have liked Charles, but yet through the streets of Barcelona, everybody followed the Mike Piper. Same here in Chicago. And use the same tactics in the series against Seattle. Michael Jordan will do it on the road to get himself back involved. Jordan progressed. Oh, a beautiful pass. The Bulls lead 79-71 with 4.25 remaining in the third quarter. Barkley's pass picked off by Grant. Sets up Grant. And Chicago will maintain possession. Danny Ainge returns. Tom Chambers will sit down. New 24 for the Bulls. Now Barkley guarding Grant. Pippen being played by Ainge. Armstrong. Barkley rebound. Evan Johnson with the crossover. And Jordan gets to it. Between last game for KJ, Kevin Johnson, and this one is he made a couple jumpers early, which got his confidence level up. Right now, he's just two for nine from the floor. Not real confident shooting. But no Jordan. Very confident shooting the ball. 41 for Jordan. The Bulls lead by 10. Coming up on three minutes left. Such a poke in the eye. Oh, he's upset. Trying to look inside at his cutters as Pippen comes down right there with the hand. That's where Ainge turns away, having been poked in the eye. 3-0-1 remaining in the third. Bulls by 10. Kevin Johnson has not done it to this point. He struggled in games one and two, came back strong Sunday in game three in that 63-minute performance. A brilliant turnaround, 11 for 24, 25 points, nine assists, but has not been able to get into it. Dan Marley, rebounded by Scotty Pippen. Bulls with a 10-point lead. Danny Ainge, all right, took a poke in the right eye, but remains on the floor and stays with Scotty Pippen. That's been the matchup. Jordan guarded by Johnson, and a foul call. Ames coming over to help. Michael Jordan will go to the line. The Suns over the limit. Jordan has struggled from the line. He's 7 of 12 from the line. Kevin Johnson called for his third. Well, I spoke to Michael uh, before the game and last night, and he said he watched the films, and what he wanted to do was get K.J. in a scoring position try to back him in where he can get into a scoring area and then take it up over him, jump over him, and try to uh, uh, score there. And the intentions of Phoenix were to come and double team him that time, but Chicago had cleared out the left side of the floor. The double team was coming from the right side. Michael just kept running away from the double team. They couldn't get to him in time. Cole's now 13 of 22 from the line. Jordan has 43 points. Five, started to go 
throw up. Crowd wanted to travel. And then it's thrown away. Oh, Jordan and Ainge trash talking. Ainge with his hands on Jordan. Jordan just told him, get your hands off me. Exactly. Now is heating up. This is a series now. The series I come to expect that it was, was going to be. Like I said earlier, it was too much friendship earlier, and now they're getting into it the way a series in terms of a championship is supposed to be. Looks like Jordan and Barkley had some words. Exactly. See, you can't be friends. You go up with something that everybody wants, and that's that diamond ring. Bulls lead by 12. Two minutes left, third quarter. Here's King. And he was fouled by Miller. Let's go back a moment ago to where the little confrontation took place. Michael with the left elbow into Ainge's midsection. There they felt he traveled. Ainge feels the pressure. Thinks his teammate's going to float to the right sideline in front of the Bulls bench, but nobody's there. Now Michael's talking to him, letting him know that the pressure's going to get worse. Ainge will take it so far, and then he's going to hold his ground. But now, what you have in here for Phoenix, you have basically almost their best offensive team in terms of you got the three, two, three-point shooters, the two three-point shooters, and Ainge and Marley and Barkley down low. Now, what Barkley must do is try to create shots for those two guys or for himself. Richard Dumas just checked in as well. And Ainge also one of the Phoenix Suns who did have dinner with Michael Jordan. Bulls by 13. Johnson all the way, and he is fouled. And claiming that he took a hard shot above the left eye. Horace Grant picks up his fourth. One of the few times that the Chicago defense has not gotten back there to close down the lane. Grant tries to come over late to get the block shot, but Kevin Johnson is already elevated, trying to convert the layup, misses, but gets fouled. Well, this is Darrell Walker's type of game. And Phil Jackson getting set to insert Darrell for the first time. He has been spotted during this series. Very tenacious defender, very scrappy player, and he will check in. Morris Grant will get a rest. Grant has four fouls. He has come up strong, 15 points, 13 rebounds for Grant. Minute 52 to go in the third. And Mark, this is an important time for the Phoenix Sun. You do not want to let the Bulls get a 13, 14 point lead here and take that into the fourth quarter. Keep the game within, like I said, 10 points or, or, or less. Took a shot. Left hand on the foul. Stacy King called for the foul. The Bulls also over the limit. So Barkley will go to the line. It's there at the end as King pulls on that finger where Charles starts shaking that left hand on the injured pinky finger of the left hand. This is the most physical game out of the four games, out of the three games that have been played before, this being the fourth game. Now we're starting to see people contest each other. We're starting to see guys get upset, get angry because of all the pushing and shoving that's going on. And like I said, you have to have some sort of dislike for your opponent if you're going to try to win a championship. And it's, 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 it, we're seeing it finally now. Charles Barkley once again gutting it out with that sore right elbow as we reported earlier. Staff making the point if this were a regular season game, Charles probably would have sat it out. 22 points, 10 rebounds, two steals for Barkley. The Bulls lead by nine. 120 left in the third. Walker for King. Oh, nice play. What beautiful passing on the inside. Michael Jordan as a post-up man. Hits Darrell Walker, cutting back across the baseline, who throws right back to the area that he vacated. Interior passing. One, two, count the basket. And Barkley goes flying. Foul on King, his third. Charles will return to the foul line. Now, why do you make a, a foul like this? For what? You, you, you don't 
want to stop the clock. If you Chicago, you want the clock to keep running. Make Charles catch it and make a tough move on you. Now, you just fouled him last time, sent him to the free throw line to get two free throws. Now you're gonna return, foul him again. Now, this will be a chance for Charles to make four free throws in a row and also stop the clock, which is in favor of the uh, Phoenix Suns. Frank Johnson makes his first appearance of the game, and Kevin Johnson will sit down. Johnson played 22 minutes in the first half after the 63 minutes of the uh, triple overtime. Frank Johnson played well in the losses to the Bulls in Phoenix games one and two. In the first three games of this series, Phoenix is just under 73% from the foul line. During the regular season, they were a 75% free throw shooting team, which placed them 16th in the NBA this evening from the foul line, 22 out of 26. Outstanding for the foul line. Chicago by nine with just under one minute left. Third quarter. could not control, although he's claiming that Barkley deflected it out. But just the effort by Charles Barkley, after he knew that he had turned it over by diving on the floor, getting a piece of it, the ball eventually goes off of Paxson's legs out of bounds. The extra hustle by Charles Barkley. Shot clock down to seven. Frank Johnson giving the shot. Frank Johnson hits the open jumper. It's a good move by Coach Paul Westphal. What he did is he inserted another shooter in Frankie Johnson. So when they double team Barkley, he had three shooters he could throw the ball to. Pippen decides to pull it back. Bulls holding for a final shot. And a foul call. Now Walker will go to the line. And if there's anyone that the Suns do not mind going to the foul line, it is... Darrell Walker has not spent much time there and uh, is not noted for his free throw shooting, only 50% during the regular season with the Bulls. 8-2 run by the Suns, and the Bulls now lead by the second. He had, he had no rotation on his shot that time. The ball didn't rotate over. Uh, very flat, so he had to get it up now. First free throws of this series for Darrell. It's only the second game he's played in the series. Trent Tucker checks back. Richard Dumas sitting down. Bulls having big problems at the line. And it is waved off. Little hesitation by Darrell Walker. It caused one of the Bulls to step in too soon like a Chris Dudley free throw. By Walker bringing the ball back over his head and pausing for a second with it, his teammate crossed the lane line. And Kevin Johnson able to penetrate, so the Suns come rolling back. Final seconds of the quarter. Pippen. And after three, the Bulls now lead by five, a 10-2 run. By Phoenix, Chicago led by as many as 13. Michael Jordan, the high man with 43. We're headed to the fourth here in Chicago. We'll be back after these messages. And a word from your local station. National Sports Awards at 8, NBC Tuesday. The big sailing. Welcome back to America West Arena. Uh, Kevin Johnson with Kevin Johnson uh, apparently uh, having some problems with his right thigh, with his hamstring, and trainer Joe Prosky treating him uh, with some heating lotion and massaging that leg during the timeout. Mark? All right, Hannah, the Bulls with an 86-81 lead as we head to the fourth quarter. 
Michael Jordan has scored 43 of Chicago's 86 points. Michael of 17 for 28. And 9 out of 14 from the foul line. Frank Johnson with the steal. So again, Frank Johnson has come on and has provided spark. And Ahmad mentioning that coming out of the Chicago huddle, Phil Jackson very upset that again, this is the second, third game in a row, that Chicago has allowed Phoenix a run to get them back within striking distance of leads that Chicago's worked so hard to build up. Well, remember I was talking about Trey Johnson again from the corner. Remember I was talking about trying to get the lead with, down within 10 points by the third, in the third quarter. Phoenix was able to do that. A 12-2 run by the Suns. That was not a good shot by Frank Johnson, but Paul Westfall will take it. Jordan got the step and rejected by West. Michael Jordan with the step, West with the block, and here's Marley. So Frank Johnson operating at point guard with Kevin Johnson sitting it out. West posting up on Jordan. And he's fouled. Scott Williams over to help. Mark West, who is not a good free throw shooter, will go to the line. They like to clear out for Jordan after timeout, Chicago, and West realizes it, realizing it, makes the rotation over, gets a piece of it, and says, hey, let's go. We got the ball. Don't slow it down. Michael gets caught behind Mark West. Too big, too strong for Michael down low. Scott Williams picks up a foul as fifth. The Suns have done the job at the line. They are 23 for 27 in contrast to the poor free throw shooting by the Bulls and the pattern and this series has been the same. You get the idea the Bulls are going to pull away, but they have not been able to. They have allowed the Suns to get back into it. For Phoenix, a 14-2 run, and they are within one. And with Charles Barkley on the bench, KJ on the bench, Dan, Danny Ainge on the bench. So you do it with guys you don't expect to be in, first, be in the game playing and scoring like they're doing. Jordan. Jordan. He has 45. The Bulls lead 88-85. He had to pull up that time because Oliver Miller made a good defensive rotation along the baseline. He got there early. Jordan Thorne pulled up, hit the jumper. Dumas around Pippen for the reverse. Jackson and Jordan at the guards. Grant front right, Pippen up front. Jordan. That's an open for three. John Paxson gets his second three-pointer. Bulls lead 91-85. I was just about to say that Phoenix had quieted the crowd back down again, but then Paxson energizes him with the three. Fouls ball to hold on Paxson. What, he, what John did, he tried a veteran move. He tried to pull Frank Johnson down on him to make it seem like it was an offensive foul. You're going to see it right here. Watch John Paxton just grab and pull Frank Johnson down. Like, hey, I didn't do it, but he did do it. Barkley, Jordan, the battle continues Friday night. This is a line. To some, it is seen as a barrier. To others, it's a point where traditions of the past are abandoned in favor of visions of the future. Introducing the revolutionary new Toyota Supra. It's taken everything sports cars were before and crossed the line. Once again, John Paxson has come on to provide a lift for the Bulls. He's hit two three-pointers. He's done it right throughout the playoffs, although he has not gotten the minutes on a regular basis. It's been an injury-hit season for John Paxson. We asked him how difficult is it receiving the inconsistent playing time and then coming through. For guys coming off the bench, it means everything. I, especially my situation, I, I don't get a whole lot of opportunities shot-wise. 
to contribute. And uh, so when you come in and they look for you right away and you knock a few down, the teammates are looking for you more. Uh, they gain a little confidence in you again. So for me, it's, uh, it's a big boost. It's something I want to carry on the rest of the way. After the first three games, John Paxson had only seven shot attempts. This evening, two for four, so he has four field goal attempts. He's made two three-pointers. Barkley fouled by Grant. John Paxson has played 15 minutes tonight. Morris Grant called for his fifth from the Phoenix side of the ledger. Kevin Johnson, despite the leg injury, is back on the floor. Here's Scott Williams returning at Chicago in foul trouble. Williams has five. And Phil Jackson rather uh, would rather take a chance with Scott Williams picking up a sixth than Horace Grant. Here's Johnson. Yes, Kevin Johnson with only his fourth field goal. He has 12. The Bulls now lead 91 87. It's really a surprise that Paul Westfall has Richard Dumas out there. Normally in the fourth quarter, Richard Dumas is sitting on the bench and Danny Ames or Chambers was in the game, but he elected to go with uh, uh, Dumas, and that was a foul by Mark West. He had his arm wrapped around Bill Cartwright and wouldn't let him uh, go for the uh, offensive rebound. For West, it is number five, and the Suns upset about that call. Mark West has played very strong right throughout, and he's received the playing time. Bulls by four. 35 remaining of the game. Pippen got the step. And the call is number six on West. It's going to be a big, big foul for Phoenix because Mark West is doing a very good job of battling on the glass, making his rotation, getting a block here and there. He steps up. He feels it plenty of time, but those arms perhaps Breaking the play where the contact took place is what was called. Eight points for West. Tom Chambers replaces him. And the Bulls are now 14 for 26 at the line. Foul run down West. Disqualified by for another foul. He's on Williams and Grant Patson. Now will sit down. Armstrong is back. Scotty Pippen had foul trouble earlier in the series, had a three for nine, and then appears to straighten things out. And he is 0 for 2 tonight, and the free throw shooting has hurt the Bulls. And it could have cost him before the night is over. It could have cost him this game, so we're going to keep a watch on that. They are not a good foul shooting team. That's the case throughout the regular season. On the turnover, Pippen. Gets it to Jordan. And Jordan looks to settle it down. Regroups. Shot clock at seven. And Jordan is fouled. Dumas called for his third. Even Michael Jordan has had his problems at the line. 14 from the uh, no, it is a non shooting foul. Bulls thought that uh, Michael was in the act. Pippen for Wilder. Well, see, now you're starting to see that with Mark West sitting on the bench, Chicago Bulls are now attacking the basket. They're going to take his ball to the basket because there's no shot blockers in the game for me. Chicago leads by six. Barkley feeling around for the presence of Williams. Chambers. And Dumas able to score with the putback. He has 17. The Bulls 93. The Suns 89. 7-10. Left of the game. Armstrong. E.J. Armstrong has been off. Johnson with the ball. Strong. 
Let's go back first, though, to Michael Jordan, who sees the opportunity. Chambers does not step up high enough, but then again, with Michael floating, who can? Now, Charles Barkley going to feel William, and he's going to spin on him, but then he's going to dunk it right over Scottie Pippen. You talking about a strong man going to the hole. He was a possessed man. He wanted that two points. Scott Williams called for the foul, so that is number six. He is gone. Six and a half. Remaining of the game, timeout is called. Falls by four. It has been a Michael Jordan explosion tonight. 19 for 32, 47 points in all. And he is headed in the direction of a seventh career 50-plus game in the playoffs. His all-time high in the playoffs, 63, April of 86, against the Boston Celtics. He had a 54-point game against the Knicks in, in May in the Eastern Conference Final Series. Well, Marv, this seems to going to take him to score probably about almost 60 to, tonight to win this game, or it's going to take him uh, to get more assists right here in these last six minutes and, and, and 30 seconds. He's going to have to come up with either more offense or more assists for the Chicago Bulls to win. Well, only four of his 47 here in the fourth quarter. That was Michael the other night in only six of his last 20 from the field. Bill Cartwright with an opportune time for his first field goal. The Bulls lead 97. Well, we got that matchup again. Tom Chambers on Bill Cartwright, so maybe the Bulls will go and try to attack Tom Chambers. Pippen is guarding Barkley. Cartwright over to hell. Chambers open. Short knocked it away. Pippen with the hesitation dribble looking for the shot that changed his mind. Barkley was by himself on the glass. Nobody else helping out. Jordan played by Barkley. Shot clock at three. Hatchin. Harley rebounds. In the first half, Phoenix had three three-pointers go down for him here. In the second half, no three-point field goal. Well, right now, Phoenix have their best offensive team out on the court right now. And Johnson takes it to the basket. Beautiful penetration move by Kevin Johnson. He has 14. The Bulls 97, the Suns 93. Just under five minutes remaining in the game. And a foul called on Marley. It's an off shooting foul for Phoenix, their fourth. KJ winding his way down the lane. It's an opportunity to get a look and a conversion. They've come few and far between in this game. Let's remember for the Phoenix team, this is the team that really won the game for them in game three. So you got their best offensive team out there. They can really score. Whoa, Pippen with the pass that had too much on it got away. And Phoenix will get it back. Pressure by the Bulls. Armstrong picking up Johnson in the backcourt and then dropping back. Okay, Tom Chambers just told KJ, let's go pick and roll because I can take Bill Cartwright. And Cartwright out to pick up the foul. That is four on Cartwright and put Chicago over the limit. One other reason, Chambers was the guy in the last game who was setting the good screens, the hard screens that got KJ into double team situations. He was unable to throw back to Chambers, who would either take a jump or take it to the basket. Phoenix 24 of 29 from the line. Kevin Johnson, a good free throw shooter, 82%. Did you say a good free throw shooter? You you jinxed him, see? Put the whammy on? Yep. You know, right here, if I'm Phoenix, I would go to Tom Chambers every time down. I would pull him out outside anywhere, the free throw line or out of the three-point line, give it to him, and let him go isolation against uh, Cartwright. Chicago leads by three. Bulls try to take a 3-1 lead in this best of seven. Phoenix attempting to tie it 
at two with game five here in Chicago Friday night, 9 o'clock Eastern time, right here on NBC. Crossover move for Jordan and finishes with the finger roll, plus the foul. Dan Morley told us when he crosses over right to left, I cannot stay with him. I know it's coming, and there it is, right to left. He gets the step, and then the elevation, and then the finish. Well, what happens is Michael Jordan knows his foot speed is, is better than uh, Dan Marley's, and he's just using all the quickness that he has. And for Jordan, 50 points. The Bulls lead 100, 94. Four minutes remaining of the game. Chant of defense. Michael Jordan with 50 of the Bulls, 100 points. Johnson got the step. who was able to elevate, extend in the air as he made certainty of someone to pass the ball to. And then somebody just happened to be Stani Pippen, and the guy that just happened to fly shot happened to be Charles Barkley, who, going back in the game earlier, had a few words for one another when there was some bumping and shoving going on, and Charles reminded him once again that that was me that got that block. So 335. Remaining in this fourth quarter, the Bulls 100, the Suns 94, Charles and Scotty get together. What I was thinking of doing is talking about what it was that the customers were telling us and then how we came up with the ideal solution. I'm Michael Wing. My name is Larry Bonadonna. Carolyn Robertson. Big meeting today. I'm Shelly Rowling. Karen Fulton. I'm Sandy Wesnitsky. Customers are very confused. There's just too many products out there. They have to know that you're giving them the best product that's out there in the marketplace. MCI is changing the way the market does business. You're going to learn a new way of doing business. MCI sells customer service, but how do you prove that? Somebody said proof. Proof positive is not a product. It is tangible proof in black black and white to your customers every 90 days. On a quarterly basis, they're going to get this report showing them exactly what they're saving versus AT&T. Proof that their business is saving with MCI. They weren't on that proper service for one month or two months, and there was a difference in pricing. We're going to credit them that amount. It creates a legacy for the person who made the decision to go with MCI. You can stop thinking about long distance. You made the right decision. Besides being an educator, Jim Elkins is a collector of antiques and an occasional Montana trout. Having owned a dozen Toyota cars, Jim naturally made the T-100 his first Toyota truck. Your typical big truck owner? No. But then the T-100 is not your typical truck. Observe the Detroit Free Press. The cabin reminds one of the Toyota Camry in equipment and comfort. The Toyota T-100 puts you in a whole new class. Ken Steffes and Karch Karai, the reigning kings of the beach, are the most dominant team on the AVP Pro Beach Volleyball Tour. But Randy Stoklos, Tim Hovland, Adam Johnson, Brian Lewis, and others are out to knock them off their throne. The Miller Lite Chicago Open, live this weekend on NBC Sports World. Miller Genuine Draft presents Genuine Moments. Well, tonight's middle moment takes us back to game five of the 1987 Eastern Conference Finals where Larry Bird stole the inbounds from Isaiah Thomas and Dennis Johnson scored, enabling the Celtics with Bill Walton to go on to win game five in advance to the NBA Finals. And it was this past Sunday in game three late in the third overtime we saw Charles Barkley steal a pass from Stacey King to further seal the Suns victory, ending the Bulls' chances of a sweep. In recognition of these moments, Miller Genuine Draft will donate $1,000 to the Thurgood Marshall Scholarship Fund. Armstrong. The Bulls 102. The Suns 94. Three and a half remaining in the fourth quarter. Charles Barkley has been quiet in the fourth quarter. Well, he's been... He's been quiet because they haven't gone to him. They're using this pick and roll play with Kevin Johnson and Tom Chambers. Now in game three, they went to Chambers and Barkley, but this time they're not going to either one of them. 
Charles has played 43 of the 45 minutes up to this point. And in the fourth quarter, we worry with fatigue set in. Kevin Johnson hit the baseline jumper. We wondered if fatigue would set in for Charles because he was guarding different people other than Bill Cartwright. He has two points, no rebounds, and one block in the fourth quarter. It is Chicago by six. Michael Jordan has 50 points. Ainge cutting for the steal, knocked it out of bounds. Strong and Jordan in the backcourt. Pippen up front with Cartwright and Grant. Goals with their starting lineup intact. Jordan rebound Marley. So the jump shot has been off in the second half for Michael Jordan. Johnson, yes. Kevin Johnson has turned it up in the second half. And he's brought the Suns within four with 2.35 remaining in the game. taking advantage of a double team on Jordan and then he's called for a double no wait a moment jump ball. a jump ball the call was changed and the Suns are upset what they're saying is that the defensive player as Pippen went up blocked the shot therefore Scotty came down and that's what caused him to then start dribbling again so they're calling it a jump ball He goes up, he comes down, the piece of the ball, then he touches the ground. Good call. Good call. Good call. This, this is an important jump ball right here, the possession of it. And it's controlled by Chicago. Jordan using the official Hugh Evans as a screen, and then he's pushed. Oh, Ainge and Jordan going at each other. Ainge and Jordan had an incident earlier continue to talk. Michael had the finger pointed in the face of Ainge. He did not like personal foul, Phoenix, 22. Did not like the body work from Ainge. The person was called on Ainge. They had a double technical on Jordan. And Ainge handed out. I still say that here's the play again. Now, you're going to watch it right here. After the foul, Michael throws his elbow up. Danny was hollering for an elbow. Then they got tangled up here. Danny gets mad, grabs the ball. Michael, they're just exchanging right now. But I, I, I still say if Phoenix is going to have a chance to win this game, they must go to Barkley or Tom Chambers. KJ is trying to do it, but I don't think he can do it by himself. Jordan is 11 for 16 from the line. He has 51 points. The Bulls have a five-point lead, 2.20 remaining of the game. Chicago 104, Phoenix 98. Now Barkley backing Grant, who's playing with five. Let's move by Charles Barkley off the spin to bring the Suns within four. And that's all because of the concern that the Chicago has with the three-point shooting of Phoenix. Nobody came. The double draw, he takes him one-on-one. -on -one. Chicago playing the clock. Jordan with the step. Jordan going glass. Rebound Grant. That's a big bucket for Horace Grant, giving Chicago a six-point lead. See, that's what happens when you... Get two or three guys trying to stop Michael Jordan. Horace Grant is over for open shot. Oh, nice pass. Johnson setting up Chambers. Knocked out of bounds by the Bulls. Tom Chambers could not stuff it. It's the second time that Chambers has tried to dunk the ball this evening, and it just won't stay in. Barkley for three. Rebound Marley. Fires for three. The basket will count. Well, the Phoenix Suns are fortunate. They don't need threes right now. It's only a six-point game. But because of the offensive rebound by Charles Barkley, of Dan Marley's missed three-point, the basket is good. Suns have three timeouts left. Balls 2 and a 20. 120 remaining in the fourth quarter. Chicago with the ball and a four-point lead. Jordan flashing in the paint. Rebound, Chambers. Johnson eluding Armstrong. Finding Barkley, and the Suns move within two with 
the minute one remaining. Bill Jackson takes a timeout. Now Kevin Johnson has been penetrating the last two times down. This time he's going to find an open man in Barkley for the slam dunk. So the Suns keep coming back. We'll be back in a moment. Imagine if your favorite movie hero stepped off the screen. Oh my so this is the real world. And into your life. You know how you always say you wish I had more friends? Hello, Mrs. Madigan. The critics are calling Last Action Hero one phenomenal movie. Bigger, better, and funnier than anything you've ever seen. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Last Action Hero. Rated PG-13, advanced screening Thursday at theaters Friday. Aspen Cologne for men. A compelling new experience for women. Aspen, now. Here's the real beauty of Rust-Oleum Protective Coatings. A tough barrier against the elements. Rust-Oleum. The name that means protection. Move it. Cool it. Silver. Bullet. Right beer now. Grab it while you can. Silver bullet. Have a right beer now. More graceful than Michael. Tougher than Sir Charles. It's the Fresh Prince. Ah! In a one-hour slam and jam and trash talk and testosterone filled sports special. With guest stars Isaiah Thomas and heavyweight champ Riddick Bowe. Now that's funny. The Fresh Prince one-hour sports special. Right after Game 5 NBC Friday. Back in Chicago, another stirring finish. Chicago with a two-point lead, a minute one remaining. That's the timeout run down. The Bulls have had major problems at the foul line. It has hurt them, while Phoenix has done the job at the line. 81%, 25 for 31. Look at Chicago, 17 for 30 at the line. Let's go over to Ahmad Rashad. All right, Marv, in that timeout, the entire team kept saying one bucket, one stop. That's their rallying cry. Marv? All right, and here are the Bulls looking for that one bucket with 50 seconds remaining. They have a two-point lead. Jordan, double team. And Barkley with the steal. Here comes Johnson. He has Marley. Marley is stripped. Dan Marley was stripped on the two on one. Again, again, in game three. He, he kind of baited Pippen in and throwing it over there. He ran it all the way, got it up to KJ. And instead of getting a basket, a beautiful play right there by Scottie Pippen to knock it out of bounds. As we showed you that steal a moment ago, this time it's Pippen with the strip to break up the two-on-one. But Barkley was able to do it in game three against Stacey King. He does it right here. When we come back, it will be Phoenix ball. Do you want to fly where there are no runways? Do you want to swing where no one has swung before? Or do you want to surf where there is no ocean and get yourself a Toyota 4Runner? Because where you're headed, you don't want to be driving anything less. After you shave, now there's comfort to the power of three. It's new soothing edge aftershave with three soothing formulas for three specific skin types. An aloe formula that's alcohol-free to soothe sensitive skin. Extra moisturizers to soothe if your skin is dry. And a cool vitamin E splash for normal skin. Soothing better than ever with the power of three. New edge aftershave skin care for men. Ultimate comfort. That's the edge. To whom it may concern, my mother abuses me and tells me if I tell anyone, she will let some bad person take me away. If you don't believe me, you can ask my sister. The last time, my mother slapped me in the face and my nose started bleeding. 
I wish I could find a new family far away who's going to be nice to me. And the family doesn't have to be rich. Can you help me do that? P.S. Don't forget, a family that's very nice and far away from here. It's a night to honor American heroes. Join President and Mrs. Clinton, Bill Cosby, Tom Selleck, and Anita Baker as they honor the great ones. A once-in-a-lifetime event. The greatest athletes of our century together for one night only. The National Sports Awards, Tuesday on NBC. Four ten seconds remaining in the fourth. The Bulls with a two-point lead. Both clubs are over the limit. And it will be Phoenix ball off the deflection on a two-on-one break by the Suns. A moment ago, Kevin Johnson will inbound. Pippen reaching around. Last touch by Pippen. Okay, you got two mismatches here for Phoenix. You got Charles Barkley, either go to the post and go to him, or I would take Tom Chambers, draw his top right out and go at him. The steal by Armstrong. Armstrong took it away from Kevin Johnson. Now, they want to play good defense without fouling right now. There is a seven-second disparity between the shot clock and the game clock. Jordan, yes! Oh, it counts! You know, it would have been better for Charles to foul him all the way than halfway foul him. Foul called on Barkley. Four-point lead for Chicago. Jordan, 12 of 17 from the line, coming for point number 55. The Bulls lead by five, 13 and three tenths seconds remaining in regulation, and the Suns take a timeout. They're down to one timeout left. Just when Phoenix had come out of the timeout, set up a play to try and try the score. The inbound pass is fumbled. Off by B.J. Armstrong, and then Chicago tries to use the clock. And remember, I was talking about whether John would hard foul Michael Jordan. It was time for that hard foul right there. Instead, instead of hard fouling, he lets Jordan get it up, and he compounded by fouling him, and it's a chance for the three-point play. The Bulls, 5-5. Five, five. We'll be back. This is a line. To some, it is seen as a barrier. To others, it's a point where traditions of the past are abandoned in favor of visions of the future. Introducing the revolutionary new Toyota Supra. It's taken everything sports cars were before and crossed the line. Michael Jordan with 55 points has tied Rick Barry for the second highest total in an NBA Finals game. Elgin Baylor with 61. Rick Barry had 55 back in 67 against Philadelphia. And now Michael Jordan with 55. Charles made a major mistake there. He should have, like Mike said, take his arms out. You got to put Michael on the floor, make him go to the free throw line where the whole full team have been struggling, and you got a better chance. You got to take that chance to foul and take him out. 13 and 3 tenths seconds. Phoenix needing a quick bucket. Marley passed on the three. And that was foul, and that's not bad. It stops the clock. Not bad from the Phoenix 
point of view with nine and five tenths seconds remaining Dan Marley who has been very quiet in the second half after that three point shooting display at the end of the second quarter will go to the line he's 0 for 1 from the line Michael Jordan called for the foul and Marley a 78 percent foul shooter watch out now here because Dan might go for the make and then try to miss the, the make the first one might try to go to miss the second one so let's see what happens here because he missed the first one. Well, right here I could see him trying to miss on purpose. Right, after, right. The second one. Missing. Right. But I don't think he'll do it now because he missed the first one. Oh. He tried it, yes, but he did. But it didn't, it didn't uh, work for him. Four-point lead. Pressure by the Suns. Who'll get the foul. Frank Johnson will send B.J. Armstrong to the line. If I can go back to that play by Michael Jordan, see the difference between Barkley foul and Michael Jordan foul. He didn't give uh, Marley a chance to get the ball up to the hoop, and uh, Charles Barkley gave Michael Jordan a chance to, to shoot the ball. So Armstrong, an 86% free throw shooter, will go to the line. Here's Marley. Yes, looked like he was trying to bang it off the back of the rim. So he tries to hit the first and misses. He tries to miss the second and hits. <laughs> it just worked out opposite for him. Seven and two tenth seconds remaining. Fourth quarter. One ten. One oh five. Chicago. Armstrong with his first appearances on the line. Six-point Chicago lead. Time running out on the Suns here in game four. Miller fires. So the Chicago Bulls have taken a three games to one lead on the Phoenix Suns. Despite shooting 53% from the foul line, or check that, 60% from the foul line, they shoot 53% from the field and led by Michael Jordan who had 55 points the Bulls win it 111-105 let's go to Amon all right thanks Mark. Michael the Phoenix Sun caught you guys a little emotionally down on Sunday that didn't happen tonight well I think we learned from the game the other night I know we had a, a dog fight we had our chances to win but we knew we didn't play extremely well we knew we could play better basketball uh, today we we still had some lapses in the, in the 48 minute game, but you know we, we struggled down the stretch, but we did what we had to do to win both. When I talked to you this afternoon, I have never seen you more determined than you were before this game tonight. Well, I was very disappointed with the way I played last game. You know, I, I had a lot of chances to win the ball game, and I didn't really converge on it. So I wanted to you know, do my part this game and hopefully give ourselves a chance to win the game. Did you worry at any time that maybe the other guys weren't getting involved in the offense? Yeah, that was a little nervous, you know, at the beginning of the game because I was getting some easy shots, I was getting some penetration, some layups, and I didn't know how the guys were going to stay within the game. But I, I think they did a good job. I think we did a good job of keeping them involved. One of the things, it looked like one of your strategies was to get to the hoop more. Well, we didn't get many fouls last game, and I said, you know, I'm going to get some fouls. If I don't get fouls, I'm going to get some easy layups. So I had to go to the hole. All right, congratulations to you, thanks. and we'll see you on Friday. All right. All right, thanks, Michael. Back to you, Mark. All right, Ahmad, so Michael Jordan with 21 of 37, 55 points at all. Charles Barkley, despite the sore elbow, 32 points and 12 rebounds. Again, the final, the Chicago Bulls, 111. Phoenix Suns, 105. Join us Friday night here in Chicago, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Game 5 of the NBA Finals. Tonight, following your late local news, don't miss The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. That late night with David Letterman, followed by later with Bob Carson. For Bob, for Mike Fratello, Magic Johnson, Bob Rashad, and Hannah Storm.